you know, I, I usually say for what I believe is coming, for me, I, I just know this in my heart. There's something very, very dramatic coming. And it's from haunting the Federal Reserve's website. I know this because I go on their website and I spend hours trying to figure out what, is, what are they doing and what does, what does the future hold? I don't want to know what the mainstream media is going to tell me. Uh, I want to know, I want to make up my own mind based on data. And the data says that we're in some deep trouble. So we've got total debt. This is that $70 trillion almost of total debt, which includes the national debt, which is the red area. And the purple is GDP. And these are laid in front of each other. So you've got the uh, yellow in the background, the purple in front of that, and the red in front of that. And there's another way to express this. This is um, linear, and I'm going to show it to you logarithmically. And because we were putting together our own charts, every time I would try this on the Fed's website, it would crash, um, and I'd lose the chart. But uh, we downloaded the data, put together our own charts. The source is all Federal Reserve data. But here you have GDP, and you've got the national debt. And after World War II, uh, we were at about 100% of GDP, so these lines are together. And then we grew the economy much faster than we grew the national debt, and then we reversed that trend and grew the national debt much faster than the economy. And here we are back up to where to levels where we were at in wartime. And this, this is danger, a dangerous place to start a, an economic contraction and a crisis with. It's very, very dangerous. And then the total levels of private debt are way too high to be starting this without going into a zombified economy. And that is where we're headed. This next crash will probably bring us some zombified economy. And the problem is, when Japan went into their zombified economy, they had us to sell stuff to. We were in the middle of an economic boom all through the 90s, uh, going into the stock market boom. And then, you know, through the 2000s, we had the real estate boom. So they had us to sell stuff to, yet they couldn't get out of their deflation and their uh, grinding sideways, horrible economy. So if you take the national debt and you divide the uh, national debt into the GDP, what you get is the uh, percentage of GDP that's represented by the national debt. You can see here during World War II, it exceeded 110%, about 115%. And we're up at levels at about 105% now. And this does not include off balance sheet items and unfunded liabilities. If you include all of the promises that we have made, this is way up over World War II levels already. And that just says that uh, the Federal Reserve, there's, there's no tools left in their toolbox of manipulation. Uh, the last go around, when, when the crisis of 2008 happened, they took rates down from 5.5% down to uh, pretty much zero. Uh, so they had 5% of range. Now we only have 2.25% of range on the uh, uh, Fed funds rate. They may uh, take rates negative, but the only tool that they really have left is currency creation, which they call quantitative easing to keep the, com the public confused. Uh, the, if the quantity that they're easing up on is the quantity of currency. So <laughs> they're reducing any constraint to the quantity of currency out there, meaning print. That's what quantitative easing means. Now we're going to move on to gold and silver. In my presentation at the beginning of the year, I presented these charts of gold.